Bang! Needs Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And today we are going over the top five worst knives in my collection. And don't you dare think that this Dalica is on the list. It is not on the list. Because this thing is an absolute beast. The stainless, the stainless steel actually comes from Mars. You should never, ever have to sharpen it. Zero blade play. Locked up, rock solid, no lock rock. The thumb studs are the best plastic thumb studs you've ever seen. I think they're made out of the most indestructible plastic on the planet, too. Um, and the best plastic pocket clip you've ever seen. It even has a plastic milled ball underneath it. So, yeah, very, very awesome. And the action is stupid good. So... Very awesome. Let's get to the list. So this one is not technically on the list, but it is USA made Baron Sons Balasong, but the trainer broke. They're decent quality. They're 40 bucks and they're not really that bad if you want to get into Balasongs. Like I said, they are USA made. Um, it does have a lot of play and tap, so that's one thing you do have to kind of get used to. They're heavy, but like I said, this really isn't on the list, but, you know, um, there's a lot better Bala songs than these, but this is a good entryway into Bala song if you're trying to learn, and like I said, for 40 bucks, USA made, and... This one, you know, it came with the trainer and the, the regular one. And the regular one has a hollow ground clip point blade. The blade is actually pretty decent. I forget what steel it is. Probably 440C or something. Um, But, yeah. Nice hollow ground blade. And it's a very useful blade shape. This one, like I said, is just a trainer. But it did break, which is very common for these. Um, I've heard of these breaking on a lot of people. But. I figured I'd just throw it in there. I have a lot of broken knives I could pull out. But this isn't necessarily about broken knives. It's about bad knives. So, we have the Smith & Wesson Pink Black Ops. Um, I actually originally got this for Kara. I think this was the first knife I ever got her. It's so crappy. But, you know, I didn't know if she was going to get into knives. We weren't really spending a lot of money on knives. We really didn't even have any money at the time. But, you know, I did want to get her a knife, something for the for her bag. It's got uh, multiple locks on it. Um, it's Or it's got one lock on it. Sorry, it's got a flipper tab, though, that does hide itself, which is cool. I think I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> but it does have a lock here, but it doesn't really work because even when the lock is engaged, like you can see, it'll still poke out. It doesn't open up all. Oh, maybe it will open up all the way. <laughs> Just broke the lock, probably. But, anyways, it is assisted and it is a piece of crap. And tip down. Next up. This was a Gerber. I don't remember the name of it. It still is a Gerber. <laughs> it's actually a, a great rep representation of Gerber. Um, I used it as a work knife, and I wound up breaking it the first day. How did it work? Um, I think I was prying something, but it was very light-duty prying. It was nothing that should have broke this blade, and the blade just snapped right in half. The... the the assist bar still works really good, though. Surprisingly, it also has a lock right here. But uh, I don't even remember what the blade shape was, to be honest. I wound up grinding it down. Feels like it was a hollow grind at one time. But I wound up grinding it down on the grinder because I still needed a knife. So I just turned it into, like, a little prior scraper, pry bar tool for the rest of the day. And got a new knife. Next up, you guys just seen this. I just did the review on this, so I don't need to speak too much about it. If you're interested in how horrifying this thing is, which is very, uh, watch my last review on it. It is the Ned Foss Folding Knife with a Clip. Big knife, hollow ground blade, nice big stop pin, but 
it's, there's so many things wrong with this thing. It's insane. But this is why you don't buy knives like this. Because for the same money, you can get an exceptional knife. I mean, just a great quality knife with zero one of the issues that this knife has. I will say it does have pretty good action, though. And it's not assisted. Now, the same company probably makes that, makes this. This is a Defender Extreme. Don't know the the actual name of the knife, but that's the brand. And I would take a wild guess that it's probably the same company that makes that knife. Um, I don't know that for sure, but you know, this one is assisted. And it actually smacks out pretty doggone hard. Um oh, ah, dang it, wrong side. <laughs> that's the that's the one crappy thing about having these wings. I mean, it's like, what are they really for? It's like you can't go up here, you can't go over. Why do they have this jumping here? For what? I can't even put my thumb on it. I mean, what to go like this? I mean, come on. I mean, I guess the only thing it's for is that. But would you really want to use this in that type of situation? I wouldn't. It'd probably just break and snap off. Um, the clip is ultra flexible. The scales, I could probably tighten them up, but you see them? <laughs> they, uh, they shift. But I'm sure I could tighten them up if I really wanted to, but I just don't care that much. I did attempt to sharpen this. Found out really quick why you don't try to sharpen stainless china steel. Because it's like got such a crappy heat treat. It's just stainless. It's a no-name steel. So, meaning... It's for people that don't know about knives, that'll never sharpen their knife, and don't understand blade steel. So it's not meant to, you know, even, I mean, I guess I did get it a little sharp, sharp enough to cut something once, and then it'll go back to dull, but it, it you could tell, like, you could just feel it. It does not feel like good steel. It's kind of like, um... You know, you sharpen one thing and you can tell the quality of it. And then you go and sharpen something that's not even the same material. Like, like say, if you're sharpening steel and then you try to sharpen wood or plastic or something. Like, that's literally the difference in the feel. Like, you really feel how uh, crappy the steel is after you've done it a lot. When you first start, you really can't tell. Um, it all kind of feels the same. But good steel sharpens easily. And very good, very fast. Now this next knife, this was actually, I got this in a giveaway. I think this is the last one, ain't it? So, oh wait, no, I, you know what? I'm going to show just a couple or one more. This is actually a good knife. So it was a gift. Um, I actually got this as a gift for uh, Christmas or something like that um, from a family member. And I actually got this as a gift from a family member too. But... This actually is a good quality knife. It's not assisted. It is a manual knife. The action's amazing. It's a hollow ground blade. It is, um, what's the blade steel? 8CR 13 MOV. So really not that bad of a steel. It's only a $20 knife. It is rubber and then plastic. Good ergos. It is tipped down. So that's kind of crappy. And now the liner is basically at a hundred percent, but it has amazing action, and like I said, very thin behind the edge, great cutter, nice thin blade stock, relatively thin, good sharpening twill. This is actually a decent knife. I, I never would have thought that um, M&P would make a decent knife like this, and it is on bearings, very, very smooth, nice and centered. I mean, it's a good quality knife, but it is, you know, on that end of the budget knives, now, the last but not least, this was a gift, um, or it was a giveaway. I, this wasn't the giveaway. It was something else, and it was thrown in the giveaway, um, and I won the giveaway. But I don't know the actual name of it, but what's cool about it is that it's actually an auto and a manual, so you can click the, the, the grips like that, or you can just use it manually. Very smooth, which is actually really cool when you think about it. And it's actually got a cool sound. The problem is, look at that lockup. And 
Very bad lock rock. Very bad side to side. I don't think, let's see if I can reverse flick it. <clears throat> but the auto actually kicks pretty hard. The wood is pretty decent quality. Um, it is real wood, too. The clip is a little obnoxious, but it's cool that it kind of lowers down and then flattens back out. So it's actually not bad in the hand. Um, I would never use it. It's just too dangerous to use. I never did use it. It actually showed up just like this. But, you know, it was cool for somebody to throw it in on a giveaway when I won something else just to throw something in. I think they had it for a very long time. Maybe I'll use it for parts or something. I don't know what I would use it for. Um, when you got the type of knives, you know, that we have, you know, you're not going to use a knife like this. But it's still pretty cool. You got to reload that spring when you open it. So when you drop it. It goes down to right there, and then you got to load that spring. But then once you do, now it's back to being a manual. Unless if you want to pinch the scales like this. See how the scale moves? And that fires it off. So there you guys go. That is the worst knives in our collection. Pretty sure. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.